What's up, anybody? NEXT here. We are standing in front of the chemist shop. Got my man Mo Oe on. As you can see, we got the uh, pyramids in the distance there. Although, it didn't quite pick up on the camera. We'll take a look at that later. I'm gonna enter now. Yosef Mo Oe on his side. Patricia. Let's go in and take a look. Here's Bravo Orion, Patricia Orion, <laughs> Susan Moore in the place to be, oh, Yosef. Hey. What's going on here, Yosef? Want to tell us about the shop? Yeah. This is our shop where we practice carving limestone, which is usually the handmade one from a scratch. And of course, we use other hard types of stones like granite and basalt stone and marble. And we definitely don't use copper chisels to carve it. But we use diamond tip tools and power tools. Such as the collection we have here. This is uh, limestone collection, all made by hand. This is rose granite, black granite. Of course, uh, as Susan Moore taught us, granite has over 700 names. So if you want this, this will be cyanite. It's a type of granite, and this is the famous rose granite from Aswan. This is also another type of rose granite that comes from the Red Sea. And this is Bazaar's stone, like the one you find in the foundation front of the Great Pyramid. And we have some amulets made from pottery and from porcelain and soapstone. As Yusuf showed me around the shop, I couldn't help but notice a wall adorned with newspaper clippings, certificates, and recognition for his father, the late Abdel Hakim Ayawan. We'll discuss Hakim's teachings in the next video, but for now, let's continue to have a look around. And this is a carving from my father, my brother Moses, who lives now in Hawaii, he made it. Stephen Miller bought it, but still never picked it up. And this is a painting of papyrus for my father as well, that was made by Patricia. She made this one for me in our anniversary. And this is uh, his wall here in the show. This is the Hakim Wall of Fame? Yeah. Oh, look this what is, we got here. Yeah, it's just a very small uh, collection. <laughs> a lot more than that. But this is just from the new seminary. And this is from the Congress when he made his visit in 1986. This is also a certification of appreciation from the Ministry of Tourism. And uh, this one also in what? his uh, visit to the States as a uh, peace ambassador, actually, people to people diplomacy. And, uh, What's this one here, Yusuf? What's this about? He was giving the key of life to the mayor of uh, Minnesota, Rudy Bushuti. And it was in the newspaper, the same picture came in the newspaper. Well, wow, this one. Uh, this is front of the uh, state building. You guys can see Hakeem right here. Yeah. And, uh, every he visited around um, more than twenty states back in, uh, in the U.S. Yes, in the U.S. And uh, every time he met the mayor and they gave him an honorary citizenship and the key of the city. It was very popular back in the day. His first tour to the United States. He was the tour guide of, uh, of the tour, which is people to people diplomacy. And since they were uh, spiritual, they really wanted to offer him something in the, in the end of the tour. So uh, he chose to travel. So they invited him and they actually invited them, uh, him in their homes. So as one of them, as he made them feel welcome here in the country. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to Yosef Ayawan and his family in the Kemet shop at Giza. This video is a short trailer to the beginning of a video series where I will be interviewing Yosef. During my meeting with Yosef, we not only take a closer look at what he sells in the shop, but we also discuss a plethora of different topics, ranging from ancient advanced technology to acoustic phenomena 
to what's behind the power of the pyramids at Giza. We also delve deeper into the teachings of his famous father, as well as see a more human side to Yusuf, as he shares from his personal experience, immersing us in the local culture. I enjoyed my time with Yusuf. I have hours of footage with him, and we had a lot of fun, as you'll see as this video series progresses. This interview will feel more like you're on vacation in Egypt and hanging out in the shop with us, rather than a formal sit-down interview. In the next video, Yusuf will explain why he believes there is a big mistake with the official ancient Egyptian timeline and how evidence can be found at a site that no one is really talking about. So you'll want to make sure you click the bell icon to get the notifications. It's the type of series that you will want to watch to the very end. I will be premiering a new video in this series every Sunday for the next month. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, leave a comment below with your thoughts, and please subscribe.